Hey there, Twins fans. My name is Seth Stoes of Twins Daily. You probably recognize me from doing post-game pints throughout this season. Um, you know, obviously I've done some podcasts in the past, but this new system is is perfect for what we're attempting to do here. And I'm going to try something. We're going to call it uh, Twin Spotlight for now. We'll see if that changes uh, and we'll go from there. But uh, we're going to try it this time. And I love your feedback. So today our first guest in Twin Spotlight is right-handed relief pitching prospect Tom Hackamer. Uh, he was drafted by the Twins in the fourth round in 2016 out of St. John's University. Not the one in Collegeville, Minnesota, but the one in the in Queens in New York. Um, and he's done just a great job since joining the organization. In fact, if you look at his 2019 season, he averaged almost 12 strikeouts per nine innings. So uh, we're going to bring him in. We'll get a chance to uh, know him and uh, ask him a few questions. So with that, Welcome, Tom Hackmer. How are you this fine and lovely day? I'm doing well. Living it up here in lovely Fort Myers. As uh, as Minnesota has been getting snowstorms throughout the week, I don't think anyone's going to feel too bad for you. Yeah, my dad. Uh, my dad asked me how the weather was the other day. I was like, ah, you know, it's still pretty humid, pretty hot. He's like, thanks. It's freezing rain here all day. So. Oh man. Yeah, and I'm at the top, uh, at the top of Minnesota in a small town right on the Canadian border, and we haven't had a ton of snow, just kind of a covering. I know the Twin Cities, Central Minnesota have just been. Uh, yeah, they got they got hit pretty good for the first one of the season, right? Yeah, absolutely. So what we do here is uh, we're live on Twins Daily's Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube pages. Uh, I will have some questions ready, and uh, it's going to be a fun show. Uh, Tom's the done a great job on his social media but just in general uh, he's pretty funny i think you'll enjoy this uh but i do welcome and you're if you got questions or comments and just to prove that we will put any comments up there as long as they're respectful we're going to start with one from brad <laughs> this says uh nice hair tom hacker <laughs> uh, dad from cedar rapids thanks brad <laughs> I'm sure we appreciate that. So let's get started. You're in Fort Myers. You've been there for about a month. Uh, what was, or I guess, let's start with what's going on in Fort Myers. What is happening in, at Instructional League? Uh, we are running Instructional League, trying to get guys uh, just as much work as possible, basically, after we didn't, uh, like in a competition setting, because um, we just didn't have a season uh, for most for most of us this year. So it's been good to get down here and like get some actual work in against hitters and game situations. Uh, it's certainly been nice, uh, but it's also very, uh, we are very well isolated, I'll say. They've got us good and bubbled up here. Well, I was going to say, normally instructs, and I'm, I'm sure you've been to instructs in previous years, it's got to be different with all the protocols. And I know it was a big deal, obviously no minor league season this year. It was a big deal getting the okay to get people back to training facilities. So what are some of the differences? What are some of the protocols that you are doing and, and seeing at, at, at the academy and at, at and around uh, Hammond Stadium and the Twins complexes? Uh, we're working in much smaller groups, uh, obviously, which is actually kind of nice in all honesty. But the uh, we got spit tests twice a week, uh, COVID tests, spitting into a tube. That's always fun. Um, we're not really allowed off. They've let us out, uh, on Sundays so far for a few different, you know, approved type of activities that are safe. Fortunately, the ones that I want to do, like go play golf. So that's been nice. Uh, but otherwise we're not really allowed, uh, off the site if we're here. Oh, uh, what else? We're not allowed, uh, even some of the simpler things you wouldn't think about, like we're not allowed to like hang out in the locker room. Uh, which is, as a pitcher, what I spend like 80% of my time doing. Uh, <laughs> so it's been, it's definitely been a little bit of a difference. So let's go back to spring training. I know you were, you were with the, everybody. Everyone was ready to get going. I want to say minor league spring training got about a week into itself. Although, you know, with the Twins New Academy the last several years, it seems like everybody's pretty much there three, four weeks ahead of time. And, you know, it's well normal. But really, once it officially started, you had about a week. What was that transition? How were you learning and gaining information on what was happening that eventually led to sending everybody home? Uh, it was, it happened really, really fast. Um, and I had been there 
uh, I'd been there since mid January. I had gone down for uh, command camp, so I had been there for a couple months. It didn't seem as sudden because uh, I wasn't one of the guys who had just you know showed up and then immediately been sent home. Uh, but it was. It was a span of like a week at most, and it might have been as little as like four days that it went from uh, like, this is like nothing, we're just going to have to be a little more careful, like no signing stuff, everything's going to be fine, to everybody go home. Uh, and I actually didn't even do that. I actually stayed because I'm from New York City, and I knew that <laughs> it was going to be a very, very tough time there if I went home. It was going to be very little to do. Oh, yeah, for sure. I do have a question here from JD. Uh, and again, uh, I think, Tom, you're going to enjoy this one. Is that a Bucky? <laughs> it is a Bucky shirt. Well, then JD says, then you are the GOAT. So uh, I, I can't argue with that. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> See the types of questions we get here on the spot. You just never pleasant, know. Yeah. This is fantastic. All right, so let's um, let's talk a little bit about pitching. Uh, you know, I think those you've been in the organization, and you know, again at Twins Daily, we cover the minor leagues pretty well. So I think most people watching know that you do throw from the side. Yep. When did that start? Why did that start? Do you have kind of one of those uh, stories for what what made that happen? Uh, it was I wanted to keep playing baseball. I played only good shortstop. reason. I played only shortstop in high school. I did not pitch a single inning. Uh, and I was going to go, I don't know what I was going to do. I don't know what my plan was, but, uh, the coaches at St. John's were basically, they basically told me, uh, you can come here and try to walk on as an infielder, or you can try to walk on as a pitcher. Uh, but we think that you'll have a better chance, uh, overall as a pitcher. So I kind of took the hint there and <laughs> subtle. Uh, yeah. Very subtle stuff. Uh, <laughs> the, person, the person I had to beat out for the infield spot would have been uh our head coach's son also so uh, i started pitching uh went out to the bullpen scott brown was the coach at the time i threw about two balls from here which is my natural arm slot which is still pretty low and he said all right you throw from here now i said okay and that's how it started uh, i was very bad at it at the beginning uh it took a little bit to get the feeling down uh, but eventually it worked out. So tell me a little bit about this, because I know the twins have had Pat Neshek, who had a long career. Um, Trevor Hildenberger was a frequently used uh, reliever for about three years. Um, and I know that you have had, you had a relationship with him through the minor leagues and the communication there. I know that uh, the twins had a couple other sidewinders last year. There's guys like, you know, Darren O'Day. And I mean, there's many across the league. It almost feels not quite like the knuckleball fraternity, so to speak, because those are pretty well gone. But is there a – I mean, you've talked before about Hildenberger being willing to talk to you and help you out and, and that kind of thing. Is there kind of a, a brotherhood of sidewinders? Yeah, absolutely. It's very much uh, – because there's some things that you – like you just universally experience uh, throwing like that. One that gets me every time is uh, – Oh, does your arm just never get sore? The answer is my arm is almost always sore. It's a <laughs> constant. It, never, it doesn't really get much worse or better, but it is constantly sore. I hate that misconception that, ah, oh, throwing sidearm doesn't hurt at all. It hurts plenty. And uh, like, it, just like everyone else. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely, there's tons of those little things that uh, it's nice when someone else gets it. Uh, so having other sidearm guys around is nice. Uh, we definitely have a little bit of a of a connection there. For sure. All right, again, that's Tom Hackmer. He's a minor league relief pitching prospect down in Fort Myers. Uh, and uh, we've got a few minutes with him, and then uh, he's going to give us a uh, performance that uh, has nothing to do with pitching. Not uh, even a little bit. Every, well, everyone will, in, will enjoy it for sure. So again, if you've got questions, comments, please feel free to leave them in the chat room. Um, I will try to add those or ask those as we go. Um, you did have an arm surgery here in 2018, but uh, returned in 2019. And as I mentioned earlier, um, had about 12 strikeouts per nine. Uh, how, how are you feeling physically and how does this year off affect you as a reliever going into 2021? Uh, in a weird way, it was nice to just get, I had, you know, six, almost eight months overall to 
just focus on what I needed to improve at, which for me is command, uh, and sort of just making sure I'm around the plate more often. Uh, but it was actually kind of nice to be able to do nothing but sort of focus on that and find different ways to try to improve on that without the, um, you know, the stress that comes with having to perform in a game when you're trying something new. So it was nice to sort of uh, iron out some different things, try out some uh, different ideas in an environment where it really didn't matter. Uh, so I had those options. So that was nice. Uh, on the other hand, it's really uh, difficult to know if they're really making an improvement if you can't see what's going on in a game. Uh, I have a good idea at this point how my stuff plays and how hitters react to it. So I wasn't too concerned about that. It wasn't like I thought I would make, you know, a couple changes to try to throw more strikes and suddenly I'd get hit around the yard. But uh, it is always a little bit harder uh, without a hitter in the box to see how they're reacting. For sure. Definitely. All right. So let's let's get to it here. Um, we do have a comment also from Brad. So I'm only leave this one up here shortly uh, regarding what you've got in your uh, dorm room uh, bed. Um, most guys may want something else in their bed, Tom, but yep, there's a guitar. So that's all we're allowed in here. <laughs> that kind of leads us to our, our next question here is, uh, you know, what, what is your, uh, background and, and I guess, where did you get the, uh, the love for music, the love for playing the guitar, the, the love for singing, all of that. Uh, I started playing the trombone when I was eight in like my elementary school band. Uh, and that was definitely when, like you said, my love for music started earlier. Uh, but that was when it really took off. Uh, I played, I think I, over the years, I've played probably six to eight different instruments in some capacity. I don't know how many I could still play. I like to claim that I can play seven or eight instruments. But if you put me on the spot and made me do it, I don't know how good I would be. Uh, but the, the trombone, the trumpet, the tuba, all throughout um, when I was playing in, you know, like my school band, uh, the guitar, the bass, the piano, I taught myself uh, just because guitar and bass, they were just, uh, we had them. My brother had tried to play them. Uh, so they were just in the house. And piano, I wanted to learn. So I got a keyboard one year for Christmas. Uh, I actually have a very odd instrument because I don't want to bring an actual piano around with me. This is a melodica, which sounds roughly like a harmonica, but you play it like a keyboard. That's a fun one. That's um, awesome. But yeah, I just, it started, it started from there and it just kept growing. It was just, it was so much fun. I had a really uh, I had a really incredible band teacher when I was in elementary school who really helped foster that love for music. Uh, and I started, uh, it made me want to just pick up more and more instruments as I went. So I want to point out, if you notice the scroll along the bottom of this page, it uh, does provide links to your uh, Twitter and Instagram page. And you do have a YouTube uh, channel that people can subscribe to as well. Um, if you want to see, you, you, uh, you've taken it to social media uh, is there any plan at some point to get on the stage somewhere? Uh, I've actually, I used to go once a year during spring training, once or twice, and go do like an open mic night. Or the year I was rehabbing, I also did that a good bit uh, to try to get my mind off the fact my shoulder was hurt and I didn't know why. Uh, but it's definitely something that I enjoy uh, and that I would like to, I'm going to continue doing and I'm going to be able to play music a lot longer than I can play baseball. So it's, uh, you know. It's just something I'm happy I'm able to do. And that was another nice thing about uh, the time off is I had a lot more time for my hobbies, which I normally wouldn't have time for in season. So that was actually very nice. And I, you know, I'd like to talk a little bit more about, cause I think it's always interesting. You know, I mean, a lot of, a lot of fans right or wrong, see ball players, especially minor leaguers that we don't see on TV as names in box scores or in stat lines and, and, like everyone else, we all have multiple interests and that's a good thing, you know, especially yeah. we all need to get away from our jobs. And, you know, I'm on, I'm on my lunch hour right now just because I can't sit and stare at, you know, numbers all day, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. 
Um, with that, let, we'll talk about some of your other hobbies, uh, but you do have a, a song that you wouldn't mind uh, playing for us. Uh, yeah. And we'll go from there. Let's, uh, that, let's I'll introduce the great Tom Hackamer. <laughs> Eh, hey, whatever. It'll be fine. Never mind. It was on my guitar the whole time. All right. If anyone is a Beatles fan, find it likely you'll recognize this song. Great. I once had a girl. She once had me She showed me her room Isn't it good, Norwegian wood She asked me to stay and she told me to sit anywhere So I looked around and I noticed there wasn't a chair I sat on the rug Biding my time, drinking her wine. We talked until two, and then she said, It's time for bed. She worked in the morning and started to laugh I told her I didn't and crawled up to sleep in the bath And when I woke, I was alone This bird had flown So I lit a fire, isn't it good? Norwegian wood That was awesome. That was awesome. Thank you very much. I'm sure it was definitely something people will enjoy. What uh, do you ever do? You ever get audiences like in the dorms, or you know? I mean, I can imagine during spring training, people are just going to flock to your room. Oh no! Usually, they tell me to shut up. <laughs> I understand. I understand. So, what is what uh, what is your music that I guess inspires you? I mean, I imagine there's different types. I I know you've got some Johnny Cash, you've got some uh, current stuff. You just seem uh, is eclectic the right word? You're kind of all over. Yeah, the I would say that's probably a, a good word for it. Uh, I'm a big a big Beatles fan, obviously. Um, big a lot of classic rock, uh, which just comes from you know being in the car with my dad, who would listen to. Uh, in New York, the station is Q1043. It's the classic rock station. It's great. Uh, and then, yeah, it's branched out a lot from there. A lot of... I'm a big Johnny Cash fan. I'm a, lot, I'm a fan of a lot of uh, country music, especially country music that uh, with really deep bass voices. So Josh Turner, uh, Johnny Cash, I'm a big fan of. Uh, I've recently gotten into bluegrass music, which is very... Not something I would have expected myself to like, but I do. Uh, even some more like folk music. Uh, it's really, it's a lot all over the place. I know too that you you were drafted by the Mets the year before the Twins drafted you and you decided to go back for your senior year. Obviously some of that's baseball, signing bonus, all that kind of stuff related, but Part of it, I think, for you was academic as well. So talk a little bit about your education and how much that meant to you. And, uh, you know, is that something you plan on making use of as, uh, you know, when baseball is done? Uh, I, yeah, I studied physics in college, which is always a bit of uh, – people don't really expect that one. But <laughs> I, uh, it was very important to me to go back and – yeah, there we go. Josh Turner's great. Uh, it was important to me to go back uh, for my senior year, especially if it, um, in the context of, I didn't think I was, uh, I didn't think it was worth it for me to leave at that point. 
uh, I thought that I could improve baseball wise. And I thought that it'd be a good opportunity to go back and, uh, you know, have my senior year a little bit more normally. Uh, and on, on the other hand, it was also a chance uh, I got to go back and have a lot of fun doing different things uh, that I wouldn't have gotten a chance to if I left. I actually did. Uh, I, was, I did musical theater in college, so I got to do that one more time. Uh, and I actually did improv comedy my senior year, which I wouldn't have done if I had left. Obviously, I hadn't done it up until then. But it was a ton of fun. Uh, and academically, it was a lot of it was good to go back and get that done. Uh, as for using it after baseball, I don't know. Initially, I wanted to do um, engineering of some form. Uh, probably civil engineering is what I was leaning towards. But I didn't really, I don't really know if that's the case anymore. One, because I forgot, <laughs> I've forgotten so much. Uh, I'm, it's in there somewhere, and I, I'm sure I could refresh it. But I think at this point, I also know so much about baseball and sort of uh, the like pitching development side of things just from trying to get better my uh, on my own uh that that's likely when i'm done playing baseball that'll be the route that i take i think all right so first of all i know i appreciate you coming on and i know you're kind of in between a couple of meetings appointments oh, i'm actually i'm fine i got uh i had a doctor we had a, an exit physical but i got that done this morning so i actually have a little bit of time okay because i do have a question in the chat room and, and since you said that i will you know anyone has any last minute questions for tom hackamer we'll uh, we'll take those um and then i want to go out on a song uh shown on your youtube page that i think is just really timely here so um but we'll get to the question that is here and again welcome others uh from kay christensen um has tom ever heard of coulter wall he has an incredible voice now, i don't know if that's coulter that has an incredible voice or if you're getting a compliment for your incredible voice uh, i've never i've never heard of him but i will definitely check him out all right um so kind of going back to the baseball side of things, um, you know, I think there's about, what, 50 guys at, at in Fort Myers right now? Something like that, yeah. Has anything surprised you? Is there a guy that uh, I get asked this all the time and I'm not even there? Is there a player that you think has really taken a big step forward from what you saw uh, maybe last year to this year, or even this spring to to this fall? Uh, it was I hadn't really seen him pitch before. I had just heard about it, but uh, Josh Winder uh, looks like the best pitcher I've ever seen. So I don't I don't know if he was that before, but he since I've been here, it's, watching him throw has been incredible. Okay, um, I do have another question here from Brad, which I'm sure people will uh, <laughs> enjoy. Uh, the question being, what was it like to live with an Australian? That was my first year in Cedar Rapids. Uh, I lived with Lachlan Wells. We were we were both living with Brad. Uh, at that point, we both got on each other's nerves quite a bit. Uh, but since then, we've actually become pretty good friends. So it, uh, it turned out well in the end, I guess. Yeah. And last question uh, before we uh, let you go here. Um, it's just my thoughts. I mean, you've been in the organization now for about four seasons. Um, and you've had a lot of teammates, a lot of good people, and probably some others that you don't want to talk about. But how fun is it for you, or is it a motivator to see so many of your former teammates, whether they were you know, back in Cedar Rapids or now that you're in the higher levels, seeing maybe more guys get that call up? 2020 was a year, weird year, but there were, I think, 12 guys that were rookies that played on the Twins team. Is that, a, how, I guess, two-part question, is that exciting and motivating for you? But is it, um, you know, I mean, you've got the friendship factor with you want to get there too. So, I mean, how does that kind of meld together? Uh, it's really, it doesn't really compete at all, which is nice, especially because I think everyone who got called up this year is, I'm a, either, I'm a big fan of them as a person overall, or we are good friends either way. Um. I was, I think everyone who got called up this year, I was very happy for, uh, it's certainly motivating to know that it's, um, to watch your, you watch your friends, uh, be up there and be succeeding. Uh, it's very motivating to know like, okay, we were in the same place last year, you know, a couple good turns that could be me too. Uh, but either way, it's just very nice to, it's, it's so cool. It's so cool to see Randy Dobnak starting off the year, leading the league in ERA, 
it's so cool to see Brent Rooker going up and, you know, just launching baseballs. It's so cool to see Alex Kirloff be the first person in the history of the MLB to start a postseason game in the starting lineup to make their debut. Uh, and it can't be, uh, I can't put it into words how cool that is uh, for all of those people who are really just great people and that I am incredibly happy. Yeah, well, I mean, people always think I get excited for these guys because I do cover the minor leagues and have for so long. But, I mean, I can't even imagine being a teammate, a guy that you literally go to the ballpark with and work with every day and, yeah. and have for several years. That's got to be quite the moment. So have you taken any chance or have you thought about it, maybe with family or friends, of, of what that would mean for you if if you're fortunate enough, whether it's in 2021 or to, to get that call? It's, uh, I mean, it's an ever-present thought, uh, but it's one of those things that I'll concern myself with when I get there. Well, that's, that's probably the cross, best. Yeah, cross that bridge when I get there. Actually, sure. if, I, if, I, if I ever make my major league debut, I owe one of my college teammates a suit. A suit? Yeah, I have to buy him a suit. And if he ever makes his debut, he owes me one, so that's... <laughs> I don't know if you guys just both make it and yeah, it's, it's, together. Both have nice suits. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. Where, right. I don't remember the the. Uh, I don't know why we came up with that one, but uh, that's the case. If I make my major league debut, I owe Jamie Gallows in a suit. All right, and vice versa. Yeah, exactly. Right, outro here with uh, a song you did that's on YouTube, and uh, I mean I think it's fun. But uh, we're going to play that video. I'm going to mute both of us while, while yeah. it plays. But record, what's kind of the background for this? This was the, uh, the start of quarantine sort of isolation. I was still in Florida. Uh, and I was just, I don't know. I was losing it a little bit. I started, I rewrote the words to uh, Folsom Prison Blues. And <laughs> I had a little fun with it. Absolutely. So I'm going to mute our mics and we'll just kind of uh, pay attention here to the song and, and uh, we'll discuss for a minute quick after it's done and we'll, uh, we'll let you go. That is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I do want to thank you again here for uh, for joining, Tom. Just, you know, where where else can people find you? I know you've got uh, several songs that you've done that you put on your Instagram stories. Uh, yeah, I just do. I find do them later. Is there a place we can there. find them? Uh, no, currently there isn't, actually. I just throw them up there, and then they, they disappear. Maybe I'll do <laughs> something with that. I just do – I do enough – I do about a minute snippet of the song for my Instagram story, and then I – get lazy and I don't do anymore. 
Okay. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for joining this afternoon. I've had a blast. I hope yeah. you have too, and I hope uh, things go well. I know your time in Fort Myers is soon up, uh, yeah. so enjoy your off season and look forward to hopefully seeing you in Fort Myers. Uh, I hope I can get down there in, in 20 so. months. So best wishes. I, I hope everything is back to normal. Wouldn't that be nice? All right. With that, thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, this will be available on the Twins Daily uh, social media sites but also on the Twins Daily Podcast, which you can find anywhere that you download your podcast. So with that, we'll have some guests coming again next week. Uh, also remember Nick uh, Nelson's off-season live uh, will be available um, for people to listen to live on Tuesday and um, Tuesday and Thursday nights. I think I'm covering for him Thursday night uh, since it's his birthday. Uh, but be sure to check those, and you can always check the archives as well. So with that, Uh, Best wishes to everyone. Have yourselves a great weekend. And, of course, go Twins.